again, we go back to Genesis. It says that, again, God created us in His image and likeness. It said, God breathed upon the dust, and the dust became a living, breathing soul. Now that breath of God, in Greek, the word is pnevma. Pnevma doesn't just mean breath, it also means spirit. So the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, merges and becomes one with the dust, with physical matter. And we became a living, breathing soul, it says. So therefore, our life, our existence, our, our soul is a merger of this divine breath, this, this Holy Spirit, and matter. In the garden, as we talked about when we were talking about fasting, God places us in the garden and says, everything is given to you freely, just don't eat from this one tree. Now, for us to fulfill God's image and be God's image, we have to be love, unconditional. Again, this is why he makes us free. We have to be self-limiting, because again, God self-limited when he gave us free will. God is a relationship. He is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Yes? He's a relationship. So we must be relational beings. And God is truth. God takes accountability. We must be willing to take accountability for our actions. Well, what happens in the garden? The serpent, right? Lucifer in the form of the serpent, entices Eve with not just being God's image, but being like God. He says, did he say that if you eat from the tree, you're going to die? You're not going to die. Your eyes are going to be open, and you're going to be like God's. So we wanted to be more than just God's image. And we did not self-limit. We ate from the tree of knowledge. Yes? In doing that, again, not being self-limiting. It was not an act of relationship, right? In relationships, we respect each other. We respect each other's wishes, yes? It was not an act of love. It was literally an act of rebellion. I don't need you anymore. I've taken God out of the center, and I've placed myself there. It was a very selfish, self-serving act. And then what happens? God says to Adam, where are you? And Adam says, I'm hiding. He says, why are you hiding? Because I'm naked. Who told you you're naked? Right? We're worried about being naked yesterday. Yeah. Now all of a sudden you're worried about being naked? What did you do? Did you eat from the tree? And what did Adam say? Yes, Lord, I'm sorry, forgive me. No, he didn't take accountability. He said, the woman that you gave me caused me to eat, and I did eat. So he not only blames Eve, but he blames God. He puts the blame on God. It's your fault. You gave it to me. She made me do it. Your fault. So what happens? We did not fulfill God's perfect image. God is perfect. As soon as we did something contrary to his perfect image, we became imperfect, right? God cannot be united with imperfection. He would no longer be God. So we were literally torn away and stripped away from this communion, this oneness that we had with God, where we, we hear God literally walked with Adam in the garden, right? So we were literally in full communion with him. We were literally torn away from him because of our sin, because of our imperfection, because we could not fulfill his image. We became imperfect in all creation now becomes imperfect. The entire creation literally is contaminated in a way with imperfection. This is why we have natural disasters. This is why we have disease. This is why we die. We were separated from that which gave us life. So humanity messes it up and humanity needs to fix it. But humanity can't fix it. Only God can fix it. But humanity ought to fix it because it's our fault. So the only answer is, God sends us his word, not as a book like the Quran or the Torah, but as a full human person, a full human being, fully human 
and fully the divine Logos, the divine God. And there is no vanity in him. There is no ego. He doesn't want to be more. He literally becomes less. Talk about God's self-limiting. God, God self-limits to the point where he becomes one of his own creations. He self-limits and humbles himself to the point where he becomes that crumb of bread and that drop of wine that we receive within us to be one with God physically because that is what the Eucharist is. That's what Holy Communion is. It's our physical union with God. We are always spiritually in communion with God, right? We, we read in the, that the Holy Spirit it fills all things in all places at all time. So therefore, we are always in, in spiritual communion, like it or not, believe it or not, understand it or not, accept it or not. But we're more than just spirit. We are physical matter. So we must be physically in communion with God. And that's what the Eucharist is. And God self-limits to that point. He humbles himself to that point. And then there's no disobedience in him. None. I only do what the Father has told me to do. I only say what the Father has told me to say. I only do what I see the Father doing. Even at the Garden of Gethsemane, he's literally sweating blood. He's terrified. He knows what's going to happen. And what does he say? If it's possible, take this cup from me, but not my will, your will. And he submits the human will of Jesus Christ the person to the divine will of God. And he goes to the cross and takes accountability, not just for his person, but for the entire human nature. All of it. Past, present, future. All of it. And when he dies on the cross, he presents back to God the Father our human nature perfect again. Just as it was taken from him. And he reunites us with God, our human nature. And he takes upon himself all of the accountability, all of our sin, so that if we believe it, if we trust it, if we give it to him, because again, in the Greek, the word is not it's which literally means to let go, to release, to remit the sin. We give it to him. We don't hold it on us. We can't do anything about it. Only he has already done it. And if we believe it, if we trust it, he makes us perfect. He allows us to stand in front of him and his Father and the Holy Spirit perfect and be united again with a perfect God. Otherwise, we can never be united with God. This is how we have to understand Christ. Christ.